here it is. Without further ado, let's go ahead and see what it made. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today's the day we are going to pick up the KLX after weeks of waiting the KLX being down. As you can see, we are in the Corvette here. And my dad is in the truck ahead of us. Before we go get the KLX, we're gonna drop off my car here at the transmission shop real quick so that way they can hopefully diagnose the issue with the transmission. That started occurring after the drag strip. We got a little bit of a flare between second and third gear. Could be servo motor, burnt fluid. But let's go ahead and get on the road and get to the transmission shop and then get up to getting the KLX. Here it is. Before we jump into the results here, I just want to give a big thanks to all the shops that helped out. Lions Technical Machining for porting the head, Max Bore in Florida for getting the board throttle body done, and of course Two Wheel Dyno Works up in Kirkland, Washington. Getting this thing dialed in runs a whole lot better than the EJK setup, runs smooth, power comes on in a linear fashion, and it rips. Of course, their customer service is great as well. As you guys saw, I called them on a Tuesday, took it up to them the next day. They called me two days later, telling me that they had already tuned it with the stock injector. I told them I wanted a bigger injector, got it overnighted. Told them I wanted a bigger injector, had it overnighted to them, got there on Tuesday, and they had it all tuned up for me the same day. Of course, thank you to all you guys supporting the channel. You guys enjoy the videos. I enjoy making them for you. We're just going to keep on going. The channel is just going to go up from here, as I always say, but let's go ahead and get into the results. All right, everybody, we made it back home here, and after a long wait, the KLX is finally back. So let's start off with the easy thing here, the injector. As you guys saw, we had to get a bigger injector for the KLX here because the duty cycle was at 99% with this little stock injector right here. As you can see, a little guy. So that was one of the big questions when we were doing stage three here to the KLX ported head board throttle body and even the big bore, if that stock injector was capable for all that power and of course more airflow. So let's get into the numbers here. So like I said, with the ported head board throttle body, big bore, of course the Barker exhaust, we were at 99% duty cycle. And right here, coming straight from the dyno shop, the new duty cycle with the bigger injector is 60% where the ECU wants closed loop and then 40% at wide open throttle. A huge reduction. Heck, we have room for a turbo and nitrous now with the injector. So that's a good sign right there. So of course in here we have the new upgraded injector. Simple install. It said that it took them like 35 minutes. So I think all it is is like a screw that's pretty much it holding it in. It's in the service manual. I was actually pretty surprised that it knocked it down that much. I thought it would knock it down to maybe 85%, 80% right where we need to be because the injector, when you order it, says it corresponds to 315 cc. That big bore, people said it's perfect for the 330. And like I said, uh, no one has really tested it that much with the 351 and of course the ported head, board throttle body, all that stuff. So 
yeah, knocked it down a whole bunch, 60%, and closed loop where the ECU wants it. I have an O2 eliminator, but the ECU still wants some closed loop operation. And then 40% at wide open throttle, the dyno shop said. So that's great with that injector. Now let's move to the part you guys are all waiting for. What did it make after spending all that money? This stage cost about, um, 1500s, $500 for the ported head, $500 for the shop bill that included two tunes and installing the injector, $170 for the new injector, $125 to get the board throttle body, and then I think $300 for the power commander. So this stage cost about $1500, but I can certainly say the results are worth it. Stick with me here as we dive into the power numbers, the dyno graph, the analyzation of that but without further ado let's go ahead and see what it made and here we have it so before you comment before you say anything let me explain some things here on the graph first so max power we are at 30.47 horsepower at the wheel torque 21.49 now you see that it peaks right here we got a hard cutoff again at about 7,800 RPM. And before that, you can see that the power is building super strong. You know, it would skyrocket up here. So I'm sure you guys are wondering, why is there such a sharp drop off in power here? We got the ported head. That should have taken care of the restriction in the higher RPM range. You'd think that it would make power all the way to at least here, you know, 9,000 RPM, maybe 9,500. So let's go ahead and break that down first. So this run was done in fifth gear on the dyno. And in the upper gears, in the ECU, the shop says that there is a significant ignition retard once you get up to about 7,800 RPM. Kawasaki has programmed into the ECU for timing basically to be pulled up top. I'd assume that that is to keep the motor safe. You know, when you're in fifth gear screaming at wide open throttle, there's, there's a lot of load on the engine. So, like I said, there's an ignition pull, ignition retard, whatever you want to call it, up top. And that's why the power drops off hard. Well, I guess not too hard. So as you can see here, the scale starts at 10, we go by five, so it drops to about 25 horsepower here on the graph. So I guess the scaling kind of makes it look worse than it is. If it was scaled at zero here, then, you know, it probably looked somewhat like this instead of dropping down so harsh it looks like. So as you guys saw in the videos under here, we have our power commander fuel controller that I had to spend an arm and a leg to get here in the US since they stopped selling it for us here in the US. That fuel controller only controls fuel. You can't control the ignition timing, which is the issue we have here. You can kind of tell here as a graph is jumping up and down, you know, it's not smooth. We have standard smoothing. We should have SAE, but that's fine here. So we're making a little bit more power than it would be if it was SAE, but these lines here, if you were to take the smoothing away, it'd be uneven, broken up, and on a dyno, sometimes that means that you're having ignition troubles, misfires, stuff like that, which we cannot compensate for with this fuel controller, and we can't flash the ECU either. So let's start off with that. That got me thinking. I remember reading about easy mods for the Kalex, and since Asia, Europe have had EFI bikes before the US, I always saw the articles about the clutch switch mod, which is right here. As you can see, this is the clutch switch. Let's the brains of the bike know if the clutch is engaged, disengaged. And a free mod would be bypassing that. So you unplug that, you basically put a wire in the connector and it would bypass that. And it would unlock a spicier ignition scheme. In the US here, of course, we got this in 2018. The way it's worded overseas is that the bike doesn't want to go over 65 miles an hour in the upper gears. Well, the KLX would obviously do that here in the US. So no one really thought that 
that was an applicable mod. But here we have the ported head and you can see on the graph here that we obviously drop off after about 7800 RPM. So what that's telling me is that we have in fact an ignition retard in the upper gears at least fifth and sixth, possibly fourth. And that brings me to the next topic. This dyno run up in Kirkland, Washington was done in fifth gear because they go one gear below the top gear, which would be fifth gear. And this bike has six gears. When I did the run down here with just the big bore and the FMF on the EJK, it was done in fourth gear. It's hard to make a fair comparison between the two because you don't know how the dyno was set up between the two. If one was set up fourth gear, fifth gear, whatever it may be. So, if the run was done in fourth gear, of course, it produced more torque. Horsepower is based off of torque. That's how the dyno measures horsepower. And we would have a higher horsepower reading. So, what does that mean? Well, 30.4 horsepower in fifth gear. If we do the clutch switch mod, and that is in fact something that needs to be done for the EFI bikes in the US, and we get a run in fourth gear down here, it'd be pretty safe to say that we're probably pushing at least 32 wheel horsepower. If that clutch switch mod does in fact fix the ignition timing, we will be able to rev all the way to at least 9,500 right here. And even if it didn't, for whatever reason, we're having power drop off here. I'm pretty sure that's what it is though. But even if it didn't, and we did the run fourth gear down here, we'd have a higher spike and torque here, which would lead to more power. And so we'd probably be around 32 wheel horsepower. So now let's go ahead and look at our air to fuel ratio here. So RPM, this column right over here, air to fuel over here. So on the tip in here, you know, we're a little lean. That is mostly due to the throttle body being cracked open immediately. So of course you have to have time to get that air to fuel ratio back down. But by the time we are to about 4,000 RPM, we're about 13 to one. We get further down here to 6,200 RPM, we're at 12.9. Further down the RPM range, about 7,500, we get to about 12.8. And then we come back up to 13 at 8,400, and then 12.8 again at about 8,900. So as you guys can see, it's a pretty good line here. We're shooting for around 12.8, so a couple of places we could be bumped down a little bit, where it's 13 to one, but we're pretty close there. Most shops tend to shoot for 13 to one. Of course, Stoic is 14.7, so by that logic, we are rich, but 12.8 is what we're shooting for. Of course, we're pumping a lot of power through the KLX, probably about double of what it came with from the factory. So we want to keep things cool. We don't want to run it too hot. Of course, we're on this cooling system of a 250. So what's the game plan now? Well, we're going to get that clutch switch mod done. Should be pretty simple. Then after that, we're going to go down here to my local dyno shop to get another run in fourth gear. Hopefully that clutch switch mod will have put some spicier ignition timing in there, allowing us to make power to the higher RPMs but by all rights, if it's just fifth and sixth gear and fourth gear, we should be able to rev out to that higher RPM. But even so, in fourth gear, we should be making at least 32-ish, depending on how the dynos are set up. But that's why I wanna go down there, just to verify that we have a consistent dyno setup because that's where I got the run done last time. So as you can see, here's the old run with just the FMF and the big bore. Air to fuel ratio was all over the place. We're at about 14 to one. And then we got really bad spike here, probably about 19 to 120 to one. And that's why we get that lean cut in the gear. Sometimes that misfire at around 6,500. Then we came back down to about 13 to one, got a little too rich at 11.8. Of course, I got that mostly smoothed out with the EJK. And as you can see here, the restriction from the head should be right here. That's why it drops off so hard. But this run was done in fourth gear. As you can see, this one was done in fifth. We get the drop off here. 
ignition timing, ignition timing, ignition timing. Of course, we got SAE smoothing here, STD, which is standard smoothing right here. Standard reads a little bit higher than SAE because of their standard conditions. SAE is about 77 degrees on their perfect day. Standard is 60 degrees, cooler temperature, more dense air. Better burn. So we learned a few key takeaways here from doing the stage three stuff to the KLX. Number one, the KLX needs a bigger injector with the 351, the ported head, all that. We are at 99% duty cycle. That new injector took it down quite a bit to about 40 to 60% duty cycle. So that bigger injector is definitely of use. Second, the clutch switch mod appears to be applicable to the 2018 plus US EFI bikes. We didn't think of that at first because a lot of people in Europe and Asia would describe it as the bike not being able to go over 65 miles an hour in the upper gears. The US one obviously could. The stock top speed is around 85 indicated. But as you can see by the graph in fifth gear, it certainly does look like it. So we're going to have to try that clutch switch mod out, get another run, and see if we do in fact make power all the way to at least 9,500. But the big thing is the KLX makes over 30 wheel horsepower and that's with all these factors into play a fifth gear dyno run we could be a little bit better on the afr around 12.8 with the ignition timing revving out like that we probably could get up to 35 ish horsepower if you look at the line here if this is ignition timing you know you continue this line to about 9500 we are about 33 and a half 34 horsepower we also learned that we're gonna have to put some thought into the cams when we're doing them the tune all that of course we got to think about ignition timing it's not just going to be all right let's go ahead and slap some webcams in here and uh, send it up to the shop but 30 wheel horsepower and what started as a little 250 with 18 horsepower a measly 18 horsepower now it's over 30 wheel horsepower but yeah i'm excited 30 wheel horsepower that is the power of about a 250 MX bike. They make about 34 horsepower. I'd say we're pretty close there. Hey, I guess we're gonna have to line up against a KX250, find one or another brand, and take a run at it, see if we can't keep up. But there you have it, everybody. We are, in fact, making over 30 wheel horsepower on the KLX. It's been a long journey, about a month and a half the KLX has been down. And about a year ago, we started with the KLX just all stock 18 horsepower stay tuned for a bunch of stage 3 klx 351 content we're gonna have the first ride we're gonna go off-roading and uh i don't want to give all my secrets away but we're gonna be having some fun so if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a big thumbs up also share it to your friends and those who may enjoy it of course find it useful this really hasn't been done too much with the klx the efi bike in the u.s at least we're learning new things every time we mod the bike and of course, if you're not subscribed already, go down there, hit that subscribe button, get the bell on. You guys are going to want to keep up with all the content here with the KLX. Of course, the FZ09 here as well, and the Corvette. But with all that being said, join the club, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, yeah. I'm the